Want to feel like Shackleton, Scott or Saunders as you pop to the shops? This should do the trick. Do without a windscreen, roof and doors and it makes an ordinary trip into town feel like a bracing adventure. Just ask that lot. It can make a Monday less mundane, it can transform a Tuesday, invigorate a Wednesday, turn a Thursday thrilling and make a Friday fulfilling. The everyday becomes exciting. Messes with your hair a bit, but in my case, I doubt anyone will notice. And this sort of transport's not as limiting as you might think either. Errands can be run. There's plenty of room for a new paintbrush, although I might have misjudged the pot plant. This is the new Morgan Super 3, and while the ethos might be familiar, it is Morgan's first clean sheet design since the Aero 8 over 20 years ago. It has the company's first true monocoque, and gone is the old V-twin, replaced instead with a naturally aspirated 1.5 litre three-cylinder, putting out 118 brake horsepower and 110 pounds foot of torque. That's good for 0-62 in 7 seconds and 130 miles an hour, if you're brave enough. Prices start at £42,000, but there are options galore. This stealthy rhodium silver spec has a few upgrades like heated seats, many mounting points, LED headlights and even a navigation system. And it would set you back around £48,000. So it's not cheap, but is it cheerful? This is just a sort of brief first drive really to get to know it. This is still in fact a prototype vehicle, albeit basically production spec. But there are really three things that I want to talk about. So, first of all, the ergonomics, what it's like to be in this new Super 3, then that new engine, and finally the handling. Let's get started then with the ergonomics. I feel like I'm sitting slightly higher off the ground in this new Super 3, but also I feel sort of slightly more enclosed, more ensconced by this new bodywork. It's also much easier to adjust both the steering wheel and now also the pedal box just with a lever under here so it slides fore and aft and the pedals are really nicely spaced. Lovely pedals. One thing you always wonder is what to do with this right elbow. Tuck it in, put it out. There's obviously not a huge amount of support in the seats but then you're so wedged in here anyway that you get support from the bodywork really rather than the seats. This particular car has got the bigger 14 inch moto litre wheel with about an inch of dish so it's uh, the biggest wheel you can get. Perhaps going smaller might help the ergonomics a little bit but then it just looks quite nice having the big wheel. Obviously I am pretty tall, somewhere between 6'4 and 6'5 so my head is definitely up in the breeze but you could tuck down behind these little screens although it's obviously pretty distorted in terms of the view out through those so you tend to sort of look around them quite a lot love that view of that front wheel i love the interior of this it's sort of somehow basic but also just really well thought out really neatly designed this car's got the optional beeline sat nav in here which i think is really fun as well very simple works off an app with your phone which uses Google Maps but it fits in perfectly somehow. And what about the new three-pot Ford Dragon engine? The first thing it says I think it sounds really good. It doesn't actually sound as much like sort of other three cylinders as I thought it might. There's not that sort of half a flat six sound. It just sounds quite naughty, quite appropriate really. I was told afterwards that this car has got a prototype sports exhaust on it, so you could opt for something slightly more muted if you wanted. My first impression of the engine when I got into it was actually, well, I was pleasantly surprised by the feeling of torque. So 110 pounds for the torque, so it has got a lot of torque, but that V-twin, it, it thrived off its torque. But this still feels really sort of nice and easy to put away from the standing start, and obviously it's only holding around just over 600 kilos dry, but it still feels nice and talky. In case you're unsure, that was a bet to see how many times I could say talk in 20 seconds. Initially then I thought it was going to feel a bit like it's running out of steam, but actually, you just 
chapter here is all the throttle. And then it really, well, comes alive. <laughs> I love the fact that it's short geared as well. To get to 60 miles an hour, you're right at the top end of third. So you can really enjoy using this still MX-5 sourced gearbox. I'd say that the old three-wheeler definitely felt instantly quicker, but this, when you go searching for that top end, the speed is definitely still there. So the character has changed, but it is still characterful. I'd say the biggest thing you miss with this new setup is the visual delight of a V-twin slung out the front. And what about the handling? Well, still very much a three-wheeler, but it is improved. I think the first thing to say is that if you want this sort of car, so this sort of exposed wind in your hair feeling, but you really, really value driving dynamics, then obviously something like a Caterham or an Aerial Atom is still going to be the go-to. But, this does have its own charm. It's not a scary charm at times, but charm nonetheless. Through a corner, you just have to be aware of the grip at the front end. That's really where it pushes, but because you've got now bigger wheels, slightly wider front tyres, it is easier to judge, you feel you've got more faith in that outside front wheel, or outside depending which way you're going obviously. The combination of the new Avon Speedster tyres at the front with an all-season Avon at the rear really does seem to have given the Super 3 a more readily intuitive balance. This certainly to me feels much more predictable, much more faithful in the way that it handles. It's still sort of tucked down in the corners. That all-season tyre at the rear means you can certainly steer with that single rear tyre, which is nice, but you just want to, you don't want to overcommit at the front end at all. Otherwise it gets a bit sort of, Whoa. but there is more feel in this one, I think. So you just want to pour it in and then really play with the throttle through the corner. Slow in, fast out. This definitely handles better than the old three-wheeler. The curious thing is also because this is obviously a small car, but it is still pretty wide at the front. As I said, one thing I'm never quite sure about is what to do with this right elbow. You sort of tuck it in round right-handers, and then you come up to a left hand like this, and you want to sort of get it flying again out there. All part of the charm. And just as with the old three-wheeler, charm is a massive part of why you'd buy your new Super 3. Heart rather than head. It is not a rational purchase. And yet, I wouldn't actually think you irrational for buying one. Unless you drove everywhere with a pot plant next to you.